Hi, this is Bill Moore for EV World, and we're talking about the future in motion. Today I have the opportunity to talk to the CEO and among his many other hats, uh, Karsten Breitfeldt. And we are uh, going to talk about a new electric car company that he's now uh, participating in. Um, a, call, a company called Future Mobility Corporation, or FMC. And uh, we're going to find about uh, a little bit more about that company. They're not going to show us the car, no matter how much I tried to persuade them. They're still going to keep that under wraps until uh, the Consumer Electronics Show next month. But in the meantime, we're going to try to wring as much information out of you, Karsten, as we possibly can. So welcome to EV World. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. All right, well, let's start off, first of all, by talking about who is FMC. I mean, I know an FMC here in the United States that makes mining equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're the same, right? This is Future Mobility Corp. So kind of bring us up to speed on who FMC is. Yeah, so we, we founded the company under the name Future Mobility Corporation because we, don't, we, 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 we see much more business opportunities than just building and selling cars. So this was the basic idea. And 7th of September of last year, of this year, we launched our brand in Shanghai. The brand is called Byton. And then we renamed the company. So the company is known as Byton now. So okay. we renamed it from Future Mobility to Byton. Okay. Yeah, so what's the basic idea behind it? We see three big trends coming up shaping mobility in the future. One is obviously electrification. Yeah. Another one is connectivity. And the third one is autonomy, autonomous driving. So electrification, I think there's a great company from California here who was past breaking in, uh, in electrification. Yeah. And we want to be the leading company in the next step, which would be connected and autonomous, or if you want, smart. Okay. So uh, our, our target is to build the first real smart car, smart car of the world if you want a kind of iPhone on wheels. All right, so the iPhone on wheels then. So you came originally from BMW. I, as I under, from what I read, you were uh, look, You looked after or headed up the i uh, i8 program. Um, yeah. Why did you get involved with with this company? What attracted you to it? You know, I have twenty years in, in in this industry. I have been twenty years with BMW, and I did a lot of things. Nearly everyone, everything you can do in such a company. So the last program was a BMW i8, and this brought me to in contact, let's say, put me in contact with the future of, of, of mobility and car industry. And I, um, uh, I learned a lot of things, and I think I, 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 I tried to understand, I, I started to understand where this will go in the future. So, um, and I realized more and more that the traditional companies might be a bit too slow and might be not innovative enough, enough brave enough really to have this kind of, of future. So in this point of time, I had to decide what I want to do. And uh, uh, to be honest, I lost a bit of my passion to do the traditional way. Uh, and I create, uh, there was a lot of passion inside me to, to doing something new and shape maybe the, the future of this mobility. And this is the reason why I decided to step out and, and founded this company together with my co-founder, Daniel Kirchett. Okay, now you're from Germany, I gather, um, yeah. a, a, as am I originally. Um, so are, do you live now in, uh, in, in China, or do you sort of commute halfway around the world to get, you, to, get to the job, or how does that all work out? <laughs> it's more the later one. So if you ask uh, where my family is, my family is in Silicon Valley now. So oh, okay. Are, you want in, in Palo Alto, uh, but basically I'm working in China, I'm working in Silicon Valley, and I'm working in Munich. Okay. Because uh, our approach is to combine um, the, the strengths of the different locations. So in, in, in Munich, this is the excellence of the premium German car industry. So we have design and vehicle concept there. Right. Silicon Valley is a place to be when it comes to innovation, autonomous driving, and user interface, user experience. And in China, we do supply chain and our production side. So uh, we integrate all of those to, 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 to one product in, uh, in the future, which will be a product for the world market. So uh, I stay a lot of time right now in, in Silicon Valley to oversee the product here. But every, every month, I spend one, one week in China to see investors and, and, and our partners and the team and the market. And, and some days in Munich as well to, to oversee the design operations. Okay. And the rest of the time in the airplane. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're, sp <laughs> you're spending, I've made that trip on a couple of occasions. That's a lot of time in an airplane that, uh, that you're spending there. Uh, can, can I have some of your frequent flyer miles? 
No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think last year I had seven hundred fifty thousand miles. Uh, I would, <laughs> I would, def, I would believe that. I bet you're not sitting in coach in most of those trips now. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's talk about some of the, the you know, the you, you decide that uh, th this company. Maybe give us some background on sort of how it, it kind of came about. Why an why an electric car? You got you, know, you got a whole bunch of competitors in China to start with. Then you've yeah. got you know then you've got uh, European and American competitors trying to trying to make inroads there. Um, you know why why uh, why start now? Uh, um, I would like to answer with the question: How many companies do you see right now who are able to provide affordable affordable electric cars okay. in volume to the market? I don't uh, see too many for now. Uh, no, I don't know of any I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> so our target first is we want to come up with an affordable car. Okay. Second one is we see China being the, the, the biggest market, and this market will grow very fast beginning from, from now and around 2019, 2020. You will see 2 million new electric cars every year in the, in, in the market. So being affordable... Um, being rooted in China means uh, doing sourcing in China, doing production in China on a very reasonable production cost. We will be able to offer an affordable premium car uh, to, to the market. And there we see a clear market potential because, uh, I, again, I don't see so many other, other companies doing, doing the same. But the real disruption we are going to do is not so much the electric car. So it will be a premium car, it will be electric. The real disruption we, will, we are going to do is the user experience and the user interface of the car, which will be more like an iPhone than a traditional car. Oh, I know. Is, yeah, go ahead. When it comes to the product. But now beyond the product, there are new business opportunities. If you consider the car to be a platform, then you can make business in the car based on this platform by offering services, like, 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 like other companies do with their, with their platforms and devices. And a, a third uh, area we see is shared mobility, uh, because uh, the future of mobility will be definitely shared. And if you can offer the right products, if you are able to step into this market, offer mobility based on a, on a, on a purpose-built product for shared mobility, we see business, uh, big business opportunities in the future. Okay. So the design, sort of the philosophy here is it needs to be affordable, and maybe you can sort of define what affordable and yet premium is, because I think... Premium is a hundred thousand dollar car, and affordable is a twenty five thousand dollar car. So, how do you sort of meet those from a design and engineering perspective? I give you an idea. The, the sweet spot in the market we are heading for in China is around three hundred thousand RMB, okay. which uh, tend to be something like forty to forty two thousand US dollars. Okay. So this is the price position we see. If you go much below, it will be difficult to make business. If you are much higher, the people will just not be able to afford it. And affordable and premium is not a contradiction. It's, it's just about uh, 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 the content of the product you are going to offer. The premium means that you hit, first of all, you hit the expectations of your customer. Second of all, you provide quality in all of those things. So this doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a $100,000 car. You can do premium products in the $40,000 range as well. Okay. Um, so talk about what, what, did you, what was the event about today? You invited me out there, obviously, for reasons I explained <laughs> I couldn't come. Um, so, so what was the event about today? So today we opened up our North American headquarters of Biden here in Santa Clara and Silicon Valley which uh, for now is mainly the, the, our, our uh, global development center. Okay. So we are doing all the innovative technologies, the autonomous driving, all the software and hardware, new UI, UX, uh, user interface concepts. Um, and we do the full vehicle integration as well here because we have to collocate all the people in one place to be, to be fast and, 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 and very efficient. Okay. Now, Byton is a, as I understand, is a combination of Byte and uh, what was the other? Give, give me some of the best. So it's an interesting story. Uh, you know, we had some companies advising us and coming up with proposals for names, and I saw hundreds or thousands of them. Yeah. Then our vice president for sales and marketing sit together with somebody in the breakfast table, and then they reflected, saying, oh, what are we going to do? What, what, what's, what's, what's about our company? And then they said, okay, it's, um, it's something like bites on wheels. Right. Bites 
wheels, bite on. So, okay. so bite on came out of bites on wheels. And I like this very much because it reflects the two worlds. Yeah? It's a digital right. world. And right. it's the, like the car world coming from the wheels. Okay, now one of the one of the key features I think from what I what you have shown of the car is this dash that it looks like it's a the entire dash is a digital display, right? Is that sort of what I is what I'm seeing? Yes, this is absolutely right. So it's a big display. Our basic philosophy from the user experience is we are going to offer a shared experience in the car. This is a big screen, so every passenger in the car will be able to use the screen and will be able to see it and, and, and have experience on the screen. And in addition to that, every passenger has his own digital experience. So the driver has a tablet in front of him in the mm -hmm. middle of the steering wheel. All other passengers have a tablet for themselves so they can do the private digital experience. So this is the basic concept behind it. And this gives you a lot of uh, opportunities because we get rid of all the switches and all the hardware parts in the, in the, in, in the car um, controlling the user interface. We just do this all by software. All right. And this means you get a lot of uh, possibilities to add new functionality and a lot of possibilities to meet your customers' expectations. And I'll just give you one example. So this car is built for shared use. So there's a face recognition camera in the car. If, if you sit into the car first time, then the car will recognize you, take your picture, and your profile will be stored in, in a cloud, if you agree to do so, if you want. Right, right. And then if you travel to Europe tomorrow, or to South Africa, or to China, and enter another Python car, this car will recognize you. It will know it's you. It's Bill Moore. And then it will download your whole profile from the cloud, and you will get not only your seating position and the colors, you will get your digital content, your music, your entertainment, your menu structure, exactly as you define it in the last car. So whatever Python you enter in the world, you will find your personalized environment. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, of course, there are obviously some privacy concerns with, with things like that. And, uh, you know, given I, what I'm hoping is you've got some very smart engineers out there that are figuring out how to make sure other smart engineers don't hack into the system and, and, you know, those, obviously those are concerns that I think are, are, are very yeah. much alive today. Um, so you've got, help me understand, I've seen a couple of figures that one figure was is that you were going to spend uh, something like $1.2 billion on the Santa Clara R&D facility where you are right now. And, that, and then you also, there was a, uh, a raise, a fundraise of something like $200 million. Can you sort of give us a sense of, you know, how much you've got into this at this point and how much more you think you have to have to, uh, to you know, to bring a car where I can walk into a showroom and, and uh, write you a check. Now, basically, um, if you look to the whole program, develop the platform and the first model we are going to do. This, this will cost us, uh, let's say, roughly 800 million US dollars to develop the platform and the first model. And we will have to spend uh, between 800 million and one uh, 800 million and one billion US dollar to set up the plant. So the overall budget will be something uh, between 1.6 to 1.8 billion. Okay. Now the good thing is, um, uh, in China you get a strong support if you if 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 you decide to be in one specific location. So um, uh, our partners in Nanjing they set up a, a complete new 200 square kilometers development zone. And they really wanted us to be there, and they okay. gave us a strong support. So, for, for, for the part of the plant, um, we have only to, to raise a very small part of this money. And other money we're getting by support, by guaranteed loans, and, and, and things like that. Okay. So, what we have to raise at the capital market at the end of the day will be below one billion to get the first car out to the market and develop the platform. Up to now, we raised um, uh, a bit more than uh, around 300 million US dollars. So there's some way to go. Uh, but we do this fundraising based on clear defined, clearly defined milestones. So the next milestones, and this will be the base for the B round, will, the, will be the car we show at 7th of January in Las Vegas at the CES. Okay. So you will see a prototype, a running prototype. You can drive it. It will be very close to the production car when it comes to design and functionality. And this will be the base for the B round. And then we are going to put the car to the plant beginning of 2019. So there the, the, the production tryout will, will start. 
and this will be then the point of time where we are going to, to raise uh, the C-round money, which br will bring us to SOP. So our philosophy is do it on achievements, doing on, uh, do it based on clear defined milestones and showing the achievements uh, to, the, to the capital market and to the investors. Mm -hmm.